Hey guys, today we are going to talk about some foils which are outrageously expensive for what they are and have huge multipliers. We will begin with a Macadian Mask Pirate. This was a, there were a bunch of pirates, one at common, one at uncommon, and one at rare with the same ability. This was the only pirate that I can remember seeing play in limited because it was very, very good. So it's a 1-1 one, one pirate. Whenever it comes into play, each opponent sacrifices a permanent unless he or she pays the one. Assuming they tap out, you curve onto it. You're likely to hit a land or a small creature. But nonetheless, it's a very, very good tempo play. And as people start building more and more pirate decks, this card is going to be in high demand. It is a $30 foil which is a huge multiplier over the 30 cents it normally costs. It has gone up in price a little bit, but that's to be expected. All right, what if I told you Coat of Arms, Tribal, 7th Edition, which I'm going to make a separate video talking about the benefits of 7th Edition. And if you have any foils in that set, do not sell them, do not trade them, hold on to them for their life. It's 500 bucks. Uh, now, this price, I think, is a little bit inflated given the uh, current tribal themes that we're currently under. Dragons, vampires, pretty much anything tribal. But this is a very, very strong card. It has been reprinted a few times, uh, even more recently. I forget what it was in recently. Maybe it was like anthologies or something like that. But nonetheless, it is a very good card. And the foil is outrageously expensive. It is quite easy to buy out a foil from 7th edition, given the fact there's just not many of them. This was the first core set with foils. 6th edition didn't have them. And 8th edition, I would look towards 8th edition to see if you know, there are cards in 8th edition that will be valuable. Next, uh, Captain Sisse. Captain Sisse is a very valuable card due to the new legendary role change, which makes Planeswalkers, which makes it easy for you to grab Planeswalkers now, which previously you could not grab. And at $165 foil, this is an insane spike. It is the biggest spike I've ever seen uh, in the quickest period of time that is legitimate, that has not declined or has not fallen off the map. So this is like a, a $1 card becoming $30 overnight. It's like a $5 foil becoming $165 overnight. Maybe not $5. I assume it's since it's older, maybe $10 or $15. Uh, nonetheless, a very, very interesting uh, scenario is happening with these old foils. Even when you look at a, if I asked you, what do you think a foil grizzly bear is worth? I doubt that many of you would say at $36, but that is what a foil grizzly bear is worth, $36. A lot of 7th edition is hit or miss. I mean, just randomly, a grizzly bear can be worth almost $40. So if you have foils from this set or you have a box of this set maybe don't open a box but the value is in the foils there are just some stunningly and very expensive foils that uh, if you get lucky i'm going to show you another one a foil common at 40 dollars you just don't see that every day and especially you don't see that anything today so i would go on a bins and look for foils i probably should do that because i might have a lot of these grizzly bears and foil Again, no one would ever trade for them, right? So, hmm. All right, City of Brass is a $94 foil. This one kind of makes sense to me because Adrazi does like it. Um, not Sorry, not Adrazi. Five Color likes it. I was thinking of the other one that's really expensive, Brushland. The Brushland and some of the Painlands and foil are just outrageously expensive as well. The lesson here is if you have old cards in foil, do not bulk them, do not trade them without understanding what they are worth. Because it's just so random that a 2-2 Grizzly Bear is worth $40 almost. This one you kind of can assume it's worth some money, 
but probably not $94. $94 is really out there for a card, so I would not have assumed that that's the value. Anyway, trade for them if you can. Do not trade them away if you, unless you really, really have to. It's also interesting to look at booster packs and boxes because I'm not sure how much a 7th edition box costs, but the prices have just spiked. Dial Chan is one of my favorite cards of all time, and it is not surprising to me that she spiked because there's probably a collector who wants to put this on their business office wall, and he's probably Asian. And he probably would really want like a few dozen copies of this. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> uh, I did tell you guys before I started buying it though. So there's not that many copies of it. This is a foil copy. So when I was making my decision, Portal Free Kingdoms was just a little too much. This one was a penny. It was worth pennies, right? And then I was like, hmm, there's not that many, much stock in it. So I'll just keep buying them because uh, they're worth pennies. Would be a great display for my office, uh, my business office. So I have a downtown office and then I had an office in the mall, which conveniently was a Pokemon stop. Not that I looked into that, right? But anyway, but it got flooded due to Hurricane Harvey. It got flooded like, what was it? Six feet of water? Like it's under a bridge, which is probably not a good sign right when like it was raining i was like oh shit we're gonna lose our office um actually the office if you're in houston they call it a gunpoint so that's not what it's called right that's not the name of the um mall but uh it has been renamed gunpoint mall so <laughs> rent was very cheap and employees really wanted it anyway uh mccadian mask foils are also very expensive by the way so fantastic. So these older foils, I'm sure everyone has them. They don't even know what you probably don't even know what you're sitting on. You could be sitting on a lot of money if you have a foil grizzly bear. A foil grizzly bear can be $40. That tells me there's a lot of random foils which are just insanely expensive. Anyway, that is it. Bye guys.